Hi guys, I'm Smita and welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things machine learning and AI related. Today is day one of the 100 days of ML challenge, which I've recently created. Yesterday, I launched day zero of 100 days of ML and I'm gonna link that video in the description box below. That video is gonna show you guys what kind of uh, trajectory we're gonna take in this entire 100 days, what type of courses and the different stages involved in the challenge. So if you are a beginner and you're starting out with this challenge, I definitely suggest that you guys go and watch that video first. Before I start this video, I want to thank you guys for the overwhelmingly positive response that I got from launching this 100 Days of ML challenge, which showed me that actually a lot of people are in the same boat and they are all trying to learn ML, but they might not know where to start. So I truly believe that we're going to build a huge community here over the next 100 days. Also, I would like to address a lot of comments that I got uh, regarding this challenge and what sort of courses are going to be used. So one of the main question was, are the courses free or are they paid? And all of the resources and courses that I'm going to be using in this 100 days of ML challenge are going to be absolutely free and accessible for everyone. Another important question was, how much time would you have to spend every single day? And that's really hard to gauge. Obviously, I think you could start off with an hour a day, but depending on your knowledge level, maybe you would be spending more or less depending on uh, what level you are at, especially with math and also basic knowledge of ML. And also uh, other people were asking about creating a playlist. I'll definitely be creating this into a playlist so that you guys can easily watch it as we go along. So guys, we are beginning day one of 100 days of ML. To start off with, we are going to talk about what is machine learning. Machine learning has a ton of different, a uh, ton of different definitions, but we're going to start off with a very basic one. The idea of machine learning is that programs or computers are learning how to solve problems without being explicitly told to do so. So the word explicitly meaning that uh, they're being either hard coded like software engineering, where we actually hard code for problems. So without having that uh, hard code or without having a software developer come in and code and tell the machine or program exactly how to solve that problem, uh, this program is able to learn from different examples that it has seen and is able to learn how to solve perhaps a brand new problem that it has never seen before. So that is the idea of machine learning. I'm going to give you guys an example and compare it with what, what is our traditional programming and then what is machine learning so you guys can get a better understanding. So in traditional programming, you have data and you have rules, rules that a software engineer actually codes and writes out and data which you pass into the program. So data and rules that exist before and you pass that into the program and you get output. So output is the solutions that you're looking for. Now let's look at machine learning. In machine learning, you have data and you have output, which is the answers. So for example, this refers to, uh, for example, if you have a data set of images which are labeled. So if you have an image, you have a data set of images of cats and dogs, which are already labeled, you have the data and the output is the labels. So for example, that image is labeled as cat or dog. And you pass that into a machine learning model from which it actually gets the rules out. So that is the major difference between software engineering and machine learning. So as I was talking about in that previous example of cats and dogs, if, you, if you're trying to approach this problem from a software developer position or a software engineering position, how do you code into a program to be able to tell the difference between a cat and a dog? It's very difficult. Uh, it's very difficult to find what exactly you can try to code into a program to tell this difference between a cat and a dog. For us humans, it's very easy to identify what's the difference between a cat and a dog, but to actually explicitly program that into a program is very difficult because they both have four legs, they both have two ears, two eyes, they both have tails. So what exactly can you, how exactly can you program it? So this is where machine learning comes in. So how does machine learning actually solve this problem of trying to identify what is the image? Is it a cat or a dog? So what exactly happens is 
you pass a lot of images, a lot of labeled images of cats and dogs into your machine learning model. And what the model does is it actually extracts features, features that we can't really hard code and it's really hard for us to distinguish. So perhaps uh, the way a cat whisker is or the way a dog's nose is shaped, these type of really hard to code features, uh, the machine learning model actually learns how to identify uh, cats and dogs and how to differentiate them. But this is after, of course, looking at hundreds and thousands of images of cats and dogs. And once that actually happens, it is able to, if you pass a new image of a cat or a dog, is actually able to identify that. And of course, there are definitely going to be errors. And that would depend on how good your model is and also how good your data set was, etc. Next up, let's look at the different types of learnings which are involved in machine learning. I'm going to be talking about three main types of learning. Of course, uh, as we learn more about machine learning and there's more research being done, there's definitely more and more categories which come up. But currently, these are the three main ones. So the first one is supervised learning. And you're going to hear this a lot throughout whenever you're learning machine learning. This is one of the main types of machine learning that is used in the tech industry and also in a lot of examples. And the second is unsupervised learning. The third is reinforced learning. What are supervised learning, uh, unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning? What is it actually used for? Supervised learning is used for classification and regression problems. So classification as in image classification, fraud detection, diagnostics, customer retention, etc. And regression like forecasting, predictions, process optimization, and generating new insights. Now unsupervised learning is used for customer segmentation, targeted marketing, recommendation systems, uh, and that falls under clustering. So clustering is a type of unsupervised learning algorithm. And another uh, way to actually do unsupervised learning is by reducing dimensions. And uh, that is used in big data visualization, meaningful compression, structure, discovery. Actually, the main thing which a lot of people don't realize is that a lot of the data that we have in real life and a lot of the data which exists online, a lot of what is called big data, it is not labeled, it is messy, it is not clustered. So what happens if you're a machine learning engineer, what you actually do is that you initially use unsupervised learning on top of this data. So, so that you can get some sort of structure in your data so that you can uh, get sort of get some identify some features, some patterns within the data. That is what unsupervised learning is best used for. After you've done that and your data has a lot more structure to it, you can identify some features or patterns, then you go ahead and apply supervised learning to it. So that is what happens in real life situations. And the last type of machine learning is reinforcement learning. So reinforcement learning is used for real-time decisions. It's used for game AI, learning tasks, skill acquisition, and robot navigation. So reinforcement learning is, if you guys have heard of something called Speed Racer by Amazon, uh, that is essentially a car which is where you can program to actually uh, race around a speed track. And that makes use of reinforcement learning also for example, self-driving cars, they make use of reinforcement learning as well. So reinforcement learning is very much used for real-time decisions where decisions have to make, decisions have to be made live. So that's when you would use something like reinforcement learning. So let's go and look at the definition for each of this. Supervised learning is where machines are learning explicitly. And also the data within supervised learning has uh, very clearly defined outputs and it's labeled very clearly. So that previous example of cats and dogs, labeled images of cats and dogs, that's a classic example of supervised learning because the images are well labeled and your machine learning model is actually learning explicitly of, okay, this is a cat and here is an image of a dog. On the other hand, in unsupervised learning, 
you might have data which is unlabeled and you might have a lot of different types of data together where you're trying to identify patterns within the data. So unsupervised learning is best used for dealing with unstructured data. And in unsupervised learning, you're not going to be able to predict or find anything specific. You're just trying to identify uh, structures and patterns within your data. And reinforcement learning is a type of reward-based learning. So as, the, so as the machine learning program makes decisions, there is another process which is telling it if it has made the right decision or not. So it is a reward-based learning and it's learning from positive or negative reinforcement. And also the machine learns how to act in certain environments in order to maximize its rewards. So as I was saying, uh, there is oftentimes an actor uh, within reinforcement learning which is telling it, it if it has made the right decision or not. So for example, if you are training an AI to learn how to play a game, there is definitely an immediate there is an immediate reaction to the environment. Of course, if the if the AI has made the right decision, it wins a point. If it hasn't, it loses a point. So these type of things oftentimes involve reinforcement learning. Next up, guys, it's time for a short quiz. And you guys can actually leave your questions in the comment section below so that we get a better understanding of uh, what you guys actually think and what you guys think the right answer is for these questions. So the first question is, what type of machine learning is best for generating forecasts or predictions? A, reinforcement learning, B, supervised learning, or C, unsupervised learning? Leave your answers for these questions in the comment section below, guys. The second question is, what type of machine learning is good for self-driving cars? A, reinforcement learning, B, supervised learning, or C, unsupervised learning. And the last question is, which type of machine learning deals with unstructured data? All of the options are the same again. A, reinforcement learning, B, supervised learning, or C, unsupervised learning. So guys, that's day one of 100 days of ML. I hope it was easy to follow along. In day two of 100 days of ML, we are going to be talking about problem framing in machine learning, and we're gonna look at linear regression and also one basic error function for machine learning. So we're gonna start off with one really basic machine learning function, linear regression, and also one loss function. So hope you guys join me for day two of 100 days of ML tomorrow as well. Thank you guys for watching and see you in my next video.